Floss Tube, welcome to the Socks for Mom podcast. My name's Becky, and I am coming to you on a very warm, hot Texas day. The temperature's well over 100. I'm out in my sunroom where you see me take a lot of pictures. If you've seen any pictures with green behind it, it's usually because I'm out here in the sunroom. Um, but welcome today. I have an FFO to show you. I have several uh, stitch alongs I want to talk about. I have some knitting to talk about. And I hope that if you are new to the podcast, you will find something that will interest you. And if you are coming back to watch me again, blather on, well, thank you and welcome. So let's get started. The first thing I want to show you is a fully finished object. Do I have that right? I'm still learning the stitching lingo. This is the Warm Winter Woolens. It's a pattern by Little House. And this was what got me back into stitching. I ordered this around Christmas time because I wanted my fiber room to have uh, pictures of sheep in it. Now I put a flange on this right here and this is just some fabric that I had. It's just a regular old cushion stuffed with fiber fill. A friend of mine has a construction company and he has a bag of sawdust waiting for me that I'm going to pick up so that I can stuff these. He said, would a bag, would a grocery bag, I mean, would a, a big trash bag be enough? And I said, that'll probably last me 10 years. <laughs> but, um, so this is the warm winter woolens. I finished something else, but I won't show that until the next podcast. Um, I want to talk about now the Plum Street Sampler Heritage Sampler by Paulette Stewart. I watched Paulette's video where she tells the story of this sampler and I absolutely loved it. I loved that the song came from, uh, from um, the song was written on top of Pike's Peak. So you will see there are little mountains in there. But as I stitch this along, I will tell you the story of it. I'm stitching this with a friend of mine, Vanessa. Vanessa and I, she's Flame Fingers on Instagram. We've known each other a very long time. We used to blog way back before there was Ravelry, maybe 15 years ago. I'm not sure if it's been that long, but we both are knitters. And so we got to know each other through blogging. Um, but Vanessa and I both love history. And this is what I have so far. Uh, this is 36 count light mocha Edinburgh linen. It's an 18 by 27 piece of fabric. Uh, I think it's gonna be much longer than it is and I am stitching this over one and I'm using DMC because I want to use up a lot of the DMC. Actually, I believe this is, this is not. This is a specialty fancy floss. It's got some variegating in it. But that's all I've done in that. And it's, it was hard to put this down. I have found I already have too many things going on. I have, it's all fun. I have, this is kind of like Starditis is what we call it in knitting. I didn't do stitch mania, but I think I'm making up for it in all the stitch alongs I'm participating in. So that is the Heritage Sampler by Plum Street. If you want to join along with us, I'm going to put the hashtag right here. It's V-A-N for Vanessa, B-E-C for Becky, and S-A-L. 
a lot of people have finished it. it it is beautiful amy loves toads just had hers framed and it's lovely okay so the next thing i am participating in is the quaker handiwork sal by brenda gervais there's a lot of people doing this and here this is probably have seen it floating around Instagram. I got the called for flosses and also the called for linen. And the colors are a little bit um, too gold for me, I guess. Here they are and I've got, I have this in my bag that I made that has the zipper pouch right here. And it has the D ring for the floss, the flosses. Um, here it is. I'll just show it to you. This is all I have. I finished the bird. And I'm stitching this on also 36 count, just one over two. And we'll see. Um, I'm not having as much fun with that as I ha I am the heritage sampler. Um, but it's pretty. I'm sure I will love it when it's all finished. Sometimes you just sign up. You get all excited. And I think this is a, an example of how I really liked the colors in the photography. But when everything arrived, I didn't like the colors as much. And I think that from now on, I'm going to start pulling colors from DMC to see what they're like before I quickly grab it. Of course, I could have subbed out the colors, right? Okay, the next thing is Mustang Sally, which is going to lead me into some acquisitions. Here is my Mustang Sally. This is what I have so far. I have spent the weekend working on this. Um, I watched Misty Purcell and Susie Reno as I was doing this. So you will see their initials right in there. You see I put their initials in it. The plan is to put everyone's initials in it that I know that's stitching this as I'm stitching this. And Misty had, Misty showed this frame um, a couple podcasts ago. It's a Z frame. I'm going to put a link down to it. I actually bought mine at Joann's using a 50% off coupon, and I really love it. You can adjust it. And I, I sit. Um, in my stitching chair with a pillow on top that I rested on to make it high enough. Um, it rises up to 10 inches. I want mine a little bit higher, but here is Mustang Sally. And I love that. I really enjoy working on that. So that is an acquisition that I got. And here it is. You've seen it a billion times. But once again, if you are new and you're starting this, please leave me your initials so I could put your initials in my Mustang Sally. I watched Misty's video podcast today and enjoyed it. She is stitching an amazing American flag sampler. And she also finished a, a um, Blackbird design an American design with the American Eagle on it. And she finished it herself. She went to her local uh, framing shop. She used Kitten Stitcher's tutorial. And I want to do that too. I want to give that a try too. But hers turned out stunning. And Susie Reno, this was the first time that I watched her podcast. 
and thoroughly enjoyed it. Susie has some tips on storing your floss and what else did she say? She is, she's stitching her Mustang Sally. She's doing an eyelet stitch for all of the alphabet and it's really pretty. I kind of wish I had thought about that before I started, but it's a little too late. So I will put links to both of their podcasts down below. And I'm going to show you some more acquisitions before the sun sets. The sun is setting right now, so I need to get a move on. I'm also working on Sneak, which is a long dock sampler. This is a stitch along put on by a um, store in England, so-and-so. And I'll just show you this real quick. It's really pretty. My husband, I asked him what he thought about it and he wasn't really that crazy. Well, he said, that's not my favorite thing. My favorite thing is what I'm getting ready to show you because this refrain went on and on. We went to Tennessee to see our grandchildren and our daughter and her husband. And when I was there, I looked to see if there were any cross stitch shops and there was, there was one in a nearby town. So after going to a park with the grandkids, they went home to nap and my husband and I went over to check out this shop. And he walked around town a little bit. I told him to give me at least an hour. Well, he came back a little bit early. He was a good boy. He sat down in a chair and was um, quietly just looking at his phone. But I showed him a piece that was hanging in the shop that took my breath away. Not only did it take my breath away because it was absolutely stunning, it took my breath away because it was something that I had seen on Floss Tube and I was seeing it in real life and it was amazing. And I loved it and I showed it to him and he really loved it too. Well, I went to the shop and I had, um, I had a list of some things that I was looking for. I really only wanted to purchase one kind of souvenir, um, souvenir for the trip. And so I had several that I had pulled from the shelves and I wanted to show him to help me pick the one thing I was going to pick. And every time I brought him one of the things on my list, he would say, that's nice, but I really like that thing on the wall. And so I would find something else on my list and get all excited and show that to him. He said, that, I like that, but I really like that thing on the wall. And this went on. I think I showed him three or four things. And he said, every time, I really like that thing on the wall. I have to show you what that thing on the wall was. First of all, it's in this bag that I made. Um, this is supposed to be a bag for the Brenda Gervais thing, but right now that thing on the wall is in my bag. Okay, so let me show you that thing on the wall that my husband liked and he wanted. Yep, it's His Eye is on the Sparrow by Heartstring Sampler. And let me tell you, in real life, it is stunning. Um, she was celebrating, the designer was celebrating the mark of, of um, the mark of distributing a hundred designs and she wanted to design something monstrously big. This is a big one. It's 435 stitches by 363. And I wasn't, he bought me this, I decided he did not realize how much a piece of fabric that size would cost. 
And I told him he could give it to me for our anniversary, which is this month. It's in a couple weeks. And I was going to not even start on it until our anniversary, but I couldn't resist. I'm sure you've seen Mischievous Stitches hold it up. It is this big. It's big. And this is what I've done so far. I've done the border and I, I'm working on the peacock right here. My plan is to do the whole border. I only bought the specialty threads in the border. I happen to have, I want to show you something here. I happen to have the Brethren Blue that the peacock was, was made with. But I also had the DMC equivalent. And I want you to look and see if you can see a difference. I did a little experiment. The head of the peacock is stitched with DMC, I think maybe 930. The rest of the body is stitched with the specialty thread. So I may be stitching a lot of this with DMC. I think the bigger parts, I'm gonna use the specialty thread, but all these small motives, um, if it looks pretty similar, I'm just gonna go with the DMC. We'll see, I'm not sure yet. But that is how much I have, it's gorgeous. So since I was going to work with so many motives, that were gonna be hard to see. <coughs> I think this is either 36 count, it may be 40. The sun is coming, I need to hurry up. I bought these magnet clips. Um, and they clip onto the top of your glasses. They just clip on and their magnifiers. I think this is 3.5. I think they go all the way up to five maybe, but they work great. They work, they really work great. So you don't have to be a slave of your magnifying glass. You can just put these on your glasses. I love them. So that was my acquisition. His eye is on the sparrow. I love it. And there's a bunch of ladies stitching along with it. And I'm going to have to find their hashtag so I can be part of that. All right, that takes me to what's Libby talking about. If you haven't watched my podcast before, Libby is my app, my reading app that is connected to Overdrive which is if you're part of, um, if you have a library card, you can go to this consortium of books and download those. So I just finished a book called Christy, and it is by Catherine Marshall. This is a newer edition. This is not the one that I read. Now, there were two books that I read in the seventh grade, I think, possibly the sixth grade, that I consider my coming of age books. Um, both of these books showed me that the world wasn't quite as rosy as I thought it was. The first book, and both of these books had just come out. Um, I read them maybe a year, maybe when they came out, maybe a year afterwards. My dad was part of a double day book club and he would get New York, best, um, New York Times bestsellers, I think. The first book was To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, right, what a story to, to let you know how the world is. And the other book was Christy. This is, they made this into a CBS television show and um, Kelly Martin starred in it. Well, I listened to the book narrated by Ke um, Kelly Martin and the book starts with an opening, uh, an interview with Catherine Marshall's grandson 
And he said that 90% of this story is true. That there's 10% that was tweaked by Catherine Marshall's husband, asked her to tweak it just to make it more of a seller, I think, and it's the romance part. Um, and I'm not going to tell you um, what's different, but I do want you, if you decide to read this, to know that most of it is true. And this is the story about a 19-year-old girl, Christy Huddleston, that goes from Asheville into Appalachia, into the Smoky Mountains, to teach school. And there was a reason I wanted to reread this as an adult. And one of the reasons my um, husband's father is from this area and all of his relatives were from this area. And I thought it would be interesting to view that. Also my daughter, my daughter lives in this area. So what I wasn't expecting, what I did not remember was, I don't know how many of you have read the Outlander books by Diana Gabaldron or watched the Outlander series. Okay, this will buy me a few minutes before that sun comes in and sets on my face. So anyways, what I was saying was that um, my daughter lives in this area or nearby and we've been to Asheville frequently to visit her. And we've also been to the place where this was supposed to take place. So Christy goes up into these mountains and I found it to be very much an Outlander story, like Outlander, because she is plopped down into this time and they call themselves Highlanders and they speak King James English because um, what had happened, I'm not going to go into great detail, but the doctor in the book is a descendant of a Scottish laird in England and he had bought land in the Carolinas and after the Jacobite Rebellion, um, the Laird's son took a lot, 15,000 I believe Scots, into the Carolinas. This is before the colonial, before, um, before the Revolutionary War, I believe. And they felt uncomfortable in their kilts and their, they felt uncomfortable there. So they continued on up into the mountains. And so this group of people is caught in these mountains or they choose to live in these mountains away from society. And I just found that very interesting. And another thing I found interesting as a weaver, um, when Christy is do, when she does a sewing circle with them, one of them mentions, oh, I have my, my granny's um, drafting pattern. I have all her patterns. Well, those are, are pat weaving patterns that her grandma from Scotland brought with her to settle in the colonies. And they, they decide to pull the loom down and start weaving again. And they also talk about dying. Um, they talk about the benefits of homespun fabric over commercial fabric and how you can dye them with poke berries, which uh, one of the first things when I moved into this house, there's a poke berry bush here. And I did some research to see if I might be able to dye with that. Well, apparently I can because that's what they did. Um, in the Appalachians. So that was really interesting. And um, anyway, so if you, if you want to see some of our Scottish heritage in the South, uh, I think most everybody in the South or a lot of people in the South came from Scottish heritage. But if you want, if you enjoyed Outlander, you might enjoy this book, but I will say it is not, not racy like Outlander was. Outlander got to be a little bit too much for me. I couldn't, um, it was over the top for me. I could have done without a lot of the stuff that was in Outlander. 
So um, that's what Libby was talking about. What's Libby talking about now? Well, right now I am listening to Moby Dick. I have eight hours left. It was a 29 hour book, I think. Um, I will tell you that I am, have eight hours to go. I have not seen hardly any Captain Ahab and we have not encountered Moby Dick yet. But I have learned a lot about whales. I've learned a lot about whaling. I've learned a lot about the ocean. Like for instance, did you know that if a shark sees a white well, they will dash themselves to death on rocks because they don't want to encounter that white well? Just a little tidbit, one of many that I've learned in this book. But as this is part of a read along stitch along with the Texas Stitchers and I chose Turkey Bay because we were supposed to choose a whale, uh, not a whaling thing, but something to do with ocean. And I chose Turkey Bay. And this is how much, I'm just about halfway done with it. And eight hours, of course, is not going to finish this at all. But I will at least put over halfway dent in it and then in November I'll pull it out and finish it up when um, there's a stitch along with turkeys. There's a turkey here flying, there's a turkey there, and I'm getting ready to stitch a great big one in the water here. It's using this incredible color. Lots of you like this on Instagram. It's using chili pepper. And oh wow, this color is something else. If I could, and I may, stitch an entire something in this color, I would. I love it, it is beautiful. So that is what I'm, that's what Libby's talking about. Libby's trying to finish Moby Dick. I think I will be glad when it's finished. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna show you is a little bit of knitting and then I'll call this a wrap. So I'll be right back. Well, I believe I mentioned last time that I still am not doing much knitting. I am looking at a spinal fusion on my neck. If this last thing we're gonna try doesn't work, um, I can't look down very much. I can't hold my head down where it needs to be for knitting. So I'm doing very little, but it is July. And for me, historically, Christmas in July, I either try to start a Christmas present or I work on something. And last Christmas, I really wanted to do this garland and I bought the yarn for it, but I want to do this mitten garland. It's an advent calendar. There's 25 of them, 24 mittens, sorry. This is, it's, there's 24 mittens and my plan was to do one for me, one for my, one for each of my daughters and that's not going to happen. These mittens take longer than I think they would, but I, I love this. I also really liked um, what Misty Purcell Luminous Knits just did with her tinies. But I want to do this, so I went ahead and started the first one. If I could get one, one knit a week, I would be really happy. I don't know if that's going to happen, um, but this is all I have. Let's see, it's Fair Isle, so I'm gonna have lots of tails here. Let me see what I can do. It starts with a Latvian braid, and they'll just, they won't be very big. They won't be as tiny as what Misty's been working on, but um, that's number one. So hopefully I'll have a few to share with you next time. I don't know.
we'll see. We'll see if I'm able to do that. The other thing I really want to work on a little bit in July, if I possibly can, I didn't get these finished last Christmas. My Christmas socks, I have one done. This, this yarn is, um, this yarn is a Brew Cities yarn. And the color is Grinch. I have one done. Pretty bright, huh? I have one done, just a plain vanilla sock. I'd like to get the other one done or take it with me and work on it. And then the other thing that I never finished, this is really a confession. For those of you who've been watching my knitting things, you probably thought I finished these, but I never did. These are the Fred and George socks. This is a Coop Knits pattern. It was in a Harry Potter, um, the unofficial Harry Potter Knits book. And Fred and George, I have one done. And I'm gonna knit the other in the opposite colors. So then I'll have two pairs of socks to wear Christmas time. So those are my knitting things. And I think that is really about it. I hope you guys all are enjoying whatever you're stitching on. I sure do love Instagram. I love seeing what everybody's doing. Um, I really have enjoyed your comments that you've left and if you've enjoyed this, consider subscribing to the channel or giving it a thumbs up. And I hope to see you in a couple weeks. Thank you so much for stopping by. And remember what Elizabeth Zimmerman said, in the rhythm of the needles, there is music for the soul. And I will say in the rhythm of the needle, singular, there is music for the soul. So thank you guys for stopping by, and I hope to see you again real soon. Bye. Take care.